Welcome to the Valve Studio. My journey to Tone Hinge continues. The last few evenings I've been doing a lot of modeling here uh, inside on the computer. And I'll go ahead and show you that. Uh, just kind of a refresher for those people who just joined us. Um, I'm becoming obsessed with <laughs> with my work bee. You know, I just like spend like all the waking moments in my day thinking about getting this thing together. And it definitely feature creep, but that's why we love watching the, well, the Valve Studio. All right, I'm going to switch over to the computer, and we'll go ahead and show you some stuff over here that I'm going to do. All right, what we got over here is the um, the CAD model for the Workbee 750 by 750. Uh, I have the uh, Workbee 1010, which is a thousand by a thousand, so mine's a little going to be a little bit bigger, but you kind of get the idea of what this thing is going to look like. This particular model is uh, I'll put I'll put together uh, in the upper position basically, which means that these twenty by forty extrusions are in the vertical orientation, which places your workpiece uh, a little closer to the spindle, and so you get a little more accuracy. But I don't really I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, I'm gonna have mine in a down position, and what you want to know uh, here is that. Uh, the ends, uh, the right and left end of the uh, work bee is not supported because you have this uh, linear rail along here. This uh, 20 by 40 extrusion, uh, we have this in the front and the back. And then we also have some extrusions down the center to actually support these end members. So, so the thing to keep in mind here is that there's no support on the ends. All right, we'll go over and we'll kind of give you a little, you know, insight to what I'm thinking. Um, last time I talked about, the, I gave you a little introduction into the scissor lift here. I mean, into my lift platform. I'm going to have it rise out of that workbench in my um, in my workshop. I bought this uh, lift jack at Harbor Freight. This is a 20, 20 inch, what they call a 24 inch. Um, jack and uh, they use this to level RVs. Um, so I have one of these. I showed you that last time. I went over here to GrabCAD and I found, uh, did some searches and I looked through these and I eventually found a CAD model for the one that that, um, that has all this all modeled and that's great because um, it's a pretty complicated model. I brought it into on shape and then I added some um, some constraints to the motion and uh, we talked a little bit about my frame itself I'm going to use this uh, stuff called super strut this is uh, uh, the version that Home Depot sells you know in the olden days they called this unistrut it's called power strut and there's a couple other names for this this is used in electrical as well as plumbing uh, fixturing uh, and also um, HVAC. I'm going to use this stuff over here. This is a 14 gauge uh, Galvi strut. It ends up being about an inch and five eighths by seven eighths. And Home Depot has all the uh, the fittings that I'm going to need. Elbows, uh, these things over here called uh, um, spring nuts, yeah, um, you know, bolts, that kind of thing. And also on page two, they're going to have, oh, they have these clamps. So I can, I can take those one inch uh, PVC clamps and use, and use these and just kind of bolt it all together. And I'll have a lot of flexibility in um, the way that, you know, I have positioning for all my pieces because everything can kind of move around in that strut. So I don't really have to, you know, be too precise in the, um, uh, construction or well, in the cutting of my my material for my work platform because I do have the flexibility of actually moving things around and that's kind of the reason why a lot of people use in strut uh, these these are um, a one inch uh, conduit pipe clamp we'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute all right so uh, let's uh, go over to my model um, so I ended up I've been thinking about this a long time and I got to the point where I was like, I didn't know how it was all going to fit together, where those corners are going to be, blah, 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 blah. And so I decided, well, I'm going to have to model this. So in the last few days, I've been modeling this at Onshape. 
And this is my workbench uh, that, that you see in the background when I go out to the workshop. Um, and you can, for those of you looking, you can kind of see my scissor jack down there. So let me let me do the grand unveiling of my platform. We will. All right, I need to click on that guy and say hide. All right, here we go. So this is the top that comes off my workbench, and then I'm gonna have the I'm gonna have the uh, work be uh, underneath it, and I'll be able to lift it up with the scissor jack. So here's the my jack um, platform my lift platform and these are those unit struts that I just was talking or super strut I was just talking about and remember uh, last time I talked to you a little bit about these uh, being as PVC pipes this is a one inch pipe here and this one up here is uh, the one and a quarter and if you remember you look at that table uh, of all the pairings that exist at Home Depot only these two will kind of slide in each other because it's PVC, it's it's kind of got a low coefficient of friction, so it's going to slide really well. I'm going to have this um, registered on all four corners, and I'm going to attach this the uh, the smaller one, which is my slide shaft, um, to my workbench, and then this platform here is going to move up and down with the scissor lift. And I'll go ahead and show you that here. All right, this is actually kind of cool, you know. So I, I got this whole thing modeled here. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit. So here's the down position, and then here's the up position. Now remember, we're going to have my work B is going to be located. It's going. I'm going to mount it right on top of this frame. So these this strut here and this front strut the front extrusion and the back extrusion you know, is going to meet up with this piece of strut here it's going to rest on top of this strut and the back one's going to rest on top of this one so this distance here this distance here ultimately is 1000 millimeters which is the uh, the length of um for for my work bee so I have this rusting right on top here. And I have that kind of modeled over here with this little piece of um, extrusion here. And I'm just using, for this entire lift platform, I'm using everything I just showed you at Home Depot. The corners, the piping, or I mean the tubing, uh, those clamps, on and on and on. Now also remember that I want to do these um, uh, finger joints for my speaker cabinets. So my work surface uh, or my spoil board here is actually going to have a split right down the center of this um, support member and I will be able to remove this part of the spoiler board surface and that leaves this cavity here where I can vertically locate my stock and actually do machining on the end of my piece of stock. And I was going to use those uh, Rockler vacuum clamps to hold my stock in the vertical position. We talked a little bit about that. So you can kind of see I have figured out the way that I'm going to actually support those Rockler clamps. And wouldn't you know it, the Rockler guys made this tab over here a lot bigger than it really needs to be. But it's going to fit right over this strut almost exactly. So we could just get one of those uh, spring nuts, put it in the slot, bolt this thing in, and then we can uh, actually get it aligned vertically by loosening this nut over here and rotating this piece of strut. And then we can kind of line it up vertically, which I, I think I can show you here. Let me, um, I gotta hide a few things here. I think I gotta hide this one. All right, so this thing up here, I'll be able to, let me hide that one as well. So this is my Unistrut here, and I got this mounted right to it, and I can change the angle at which this occurs by 
loosen this nut that's going to exist right here and just kind of rotate it into position and tighten that nut down. And I can do that with a giant uh, construction square by actually leveling this or vertically aligning this to my actual spoil board because the spoil board has got a split in it. All right. <clears throat> and I, uh, when I put the, the third, I mean the, the, the one third of the spoil board back in, it needs a support that runs along, uh, along the, the, um, you know, f from the front to the back of the work bee. So I'm going to have to get another piece of extrusion here, but I have a ton of this 2040 in the garage. I'll just cut this to the same length that, that, uh, came with the work bee because this is a work bee component. This one is a work bee component. This is the stuff that came with it. And I will just have to make a duplicate of this one here, which isn't going to be a problem. And this stuff up here is the spoiler board that we're going to probably end up purchasing as MDF or something like that. All right. So this was uh, a blessing that this all worked out right. Um, this is a front to back support member. And I just, I'll make that just like I'm doing all the rest of it. So this when I need to support these other two um, front to back supports for my spoil board support, I am going to be able to support that within my frame over here by just making some vertical pieces. Now, so those will be in there. Now, there's the jack itself, this particular uh, strut is actually a little bit different than the rest. It's not in that orientation. It's not really shown here, but ultimately I'm going to, I'm going to have this thing be a little bit longer and I'm going to move it all the way out to the end of this one. So from the bottom, it's going to actually sit on the shelf and then I can use one of those corner brackets here, um, and attach it and I'll end up flipping this in 180 degrees so that the, uh, the, the channel itself is pointing up on this one here. So this is the reason why I did all this modeling was how do I orient all the struts so that I can use all the, the angle pieces and all the pipe clamps. And I had to draw this out. And uh, once I got that, I was like, all right, we are good to go. So let's look at this corner over here. This is kind of a little bit complicated. Well, this adds another little nuance to the whole thing. All right. So I'll turn that, just that front strut back on. If I can figure out where it is. I think it's, yeah, it's this one. All right, so we're meeting in a corner and this is a, there's our, our, basically our corner, um, our corner piece itself. And this is one of those pipe clamps that I showed you. And it holds the one and a quarter inch piece on the end here. And then when the, it's not when I'm, when the machine is all the way in the up position, I need a way to, to, uh, take it off the jack basically, because I want, I don't want the jack to actually be the support, the main support member of the work beat. I want my, my lifting platform to actually be supported on four corners. And so I'm going to have this, um, I'm going to have a mechanism. Let's see if I can grab this thing. There we go. So I'm going to have a mechanism over here where, uh, I can slide it all the way up and throw a bolt through here. But as you can see, I have a little bit of an issue with this. I'll have to kind of figure out how to resolve this here. Um, actually there's a, there's a several issues here. Um, the top one here with this one inch piece needs to somehow attached to this two by four and on my workbench. So I have that issue. And if we look down from the top, that one inch piece kind of comes in contact with my base down here at the bottom, sort of. And so somehow I need to secure this on the bottom down here. And I might just put a piece of of angle, you know, shelf bracket or something. I don't know what I, I haven't figured this part out. These are questions I don't know. 
All right, so um, that's a little issue in the corner. I'll be, I'll be thinking about that. Um, what do I got here? I got the corners and orientation. And you know what that means. All right, so here's the corner. Yeah, I should have wrote down more description of the problems I'm having. The, other, the real big problem of this is my workbench is not, it's not really level. And so I have to figure out how to level my workbench, which is made out of pine, in order for me to not kind of tweak the the lifting platform, which ultimately will put a little bit of a, a, a moment onto the work bee. So this can be a little bit of a challenge. I got to talk to Rob about this. Who's my friend here in town? Or I got another friend whose name is Bill, and. Uh, they will have a very clever solution for this as well. All right, uh, those are the problems here. Now, remember the entire goal of this is to be able to raise and lift my work bee such that the spoil board height is the height of the, the table so that if I want to work on a work piece that's much bigger than the table, I can stick it in the work bee and have it protrude out the back and use and, and, and be able to actually move my piece front and back um, and be able to work on really long pieces of, of wood. That's one goal. The other goal is that when, I, when it's in the down position, I can put the top back on my workbench. That's why I wanted a 24 inch jack. When we measured this last week, uh oh. What's that's uh twelve thirty here, so when we measured this last week, the height from the from the bottom of the work bee to the top of my integrated step servo motor needed to be more than seventeen inches. I'm shooting for eighteen or nineteen, that'd be great. That's the distance from here down at the bottom up to the top of my um, stepper motor. I measured it last week. I, you saw that. This model that, that I got from uh, Open Builds is, um, just has a standard NEMA 23 motors in it. All right, back to our thing. Let's find out how we're doing. All right, so when the, when the position is all the way up, here is the basically the outfeed table height. Remember now this... This is the part that the, the tabletop comes off. This is what's left over. So there is a, a, you know, there's a complete work surface. Let me figure out how to do use this. Okay. So there's a complete work surface back here on the workbench. And then my spoiler board is here. All right. Let's see how we did here. Ideally, you know, the spoiler board ultimately is going to be surfaced. So I need to raise it probably a lot more than that I don't quite know the answer to that yet um, but let's just let's kind of look at the height of this so if we look at we want to look at that guy there no we want to look at this the surface so we want to click on this surface here and we click on this surface our parallel distance is 2.54 that means that my my height of my my platform is two and a half millimeters higher, which is great, all right? Because, you know, this thing kind of lifts up and down. I can move it all the way up and screw it in and mount it. And I know that my, uh, I, I will have an outfeed table to, to um, for my, for larger work, work pieces. Now, the big test is, let me hide this guy here. And we'll hide this one back over here all right so now the big test is oops I hit a little bit too much here I want to hide that yeah I need my outfeed table and I want to hide this okay so when I go down I need the work bee height, which is the from the bottom of the work bee, 
which is this bottom to that top to be more than 6, 17. On this drawing, it is ultimately the bottom of this piece, which is that 20 by 40 extrusion on the work B, to the bottom of this piece, which is the underside of my tabletop. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So when I move the jack down, we come all the way down. I want to know I want to know well we can just pick this line here that line is basically the bottom of the work B to this corner right here 550 no wait Actually, we, I think we want to get parallel lines and we don't have to figure out the... Parallel distance is 724. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Alexa, what's 724 millimeters in inches? 24 millimeters is 28.5 inches. Now nah, I'm doing something wrong here. That's not right. That didn't really give me the right number because I know it's not 700. I know it's something, it should be about 500. That one. To that corner. And then if we come over here and we do this one right here, D, 520 millimeters. Alexa, what's 520 millimeters in inches? 520 millimeters is 20.47 inches. Yes, 20.47. <laughs> so we're going to be able to lower it all the way down with my jack and raise it all the way back up again. All right, so I'm very happy about this. I am going to probably buy um, this. Uh, oh, there's another question. Oh, there's another feature to this I want to show you before we... Kind of close it off. This is my inch and a quarter inch slider that's actually connected to the platform. Um, let me turn all my pieces back on here. Wherever it ended up going. Oh, there we go. Um, this piece here is the inch and a quarter inch slider and it's attached to the side of my, extru my, um, my strut here. I made these extra long. Now, why did I make them extra long? Uh, that ad, that actually adds going to add some. Um, uh, it's going to make it so it's going to bind less when it goes up and it kind of gets a little bit off center. It's going to keep it centered. And when I put it down, I don't want it to rest only on the jack when it's in the down position either. So I have this height set up so that when I move it down. I grab the right piece here. When I move it down, it's now supported on all four corners in addition to the jack uh, because my slider pieces are going to come in contact with the bottom of my workbench. All this because I was able to draw it all in on shape. Well, my short video here ended up being really long. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is the Valve Studio.